Welcome to this webinar, Artwork Tips for DTG Printing. Right, this what you see on my screen here. This is my new book. Um, I am super proud of this book. This book is um, put together focusing on artwork for DTG printing. Right, it says Adobe Photoshop CC 2019 users. It's actually any version of Photoshop, probably all the way back to CS6. It is designed to help you figure out how to get through certain hurdles and how to get to the right result that you're looking for or your customer might be looking for. It'll literally walk you through step by step of how to make these things happen. So I just wanted to show you that. And I will tell you this, that there is a special offer on this book uh, that we have, and you'll be hearing that at the end of the webinar. So for those of you coming here and spending time with us, uh, we'll make it worth your while, and we really do appreciate that. Knowing that, I'm going to get ahead and get rid of this thing here, and uh, we'll get this guy going. One thing we need to understand in our industry, and that's whether you're printing on a DTG or dye sublimation equipment, uh, white toner, laser printers, screen printing, whatever it is, there's two types of artwork that we need to understand and know how to handle. One being vector artwork. Most of us know what a vector art file is. So I'm going to show you what that is here. I'm just going to go to uh, Illustrator, right? So this is the same design that I just had open in Photoshop, but this is the vector version. So as I mouse around here, you can see what's going on. So I'm going to click on this guy, and I'm going to go ahead and view my outline, right? And I want you to see that. See, that those are nodes. Every little square that you see here, these are called nodes in vector. So... I'm sure most of you know what a vector file is. Like I mentioned, um, if you do any vinyl cutting, obviously if you're a Stahl's customer and you buy our vinyl, then you are very familiar with a vector file because that's what it, it needs in order to cut, right? You have to have a vector file so that blade knows where it's supposed to go. So the nice thing about vector is it is a good, clean piece of artwork. It is scalable. Uh, infinitely so I can take this little guy if he's three inches four inches and I can blow him up the side of a building and what happens is it just recalculates and redraws the math in between all those nodes right um, it knows what the shape from node to node is so if I go in here and I select this guy and you see it knows from this node to this node what that is how long it is which sort of shape it is if it's a curve if it's a straight line those kind of things and when you scale it up it's just gonna recalculate and redo and it's going to work. Uh, so screen printers and vinyl cutters, this is exactly where you want to be because that's what you need. Now, what I want to show you also in this particular webinar, right, we're going to focus more so on Photoshop because if you're a DTG printer and a die sublimation printer, let's say, anytime you're going to print in full color, you should be using Photoshop. Photoshop is the industry standard, and I mean the artwork industry standard. That means all of the decoration uh, things, right? From the movie industry to the advertising industry to the t-shirt industry. They're all using Adobe Photoshop when they're using full color stuff. Uh, so that's where we want to be. That's where I would recommend for you to be. Whether you're, if you're, if you use Corel Draw, Right. And I'm on a Mac and I have my Illustrator, my Photoshop. I'm, that's, I'm an Adobe user. But if you use Corel Draw as your vector program of choice for your vinyl cutters, that's fine. Absolutely no sweat, no problem. When you print digitally though, you want to use Photoshop. And even if you're a Corel user, you can use Photoshop hand in hand together without any issues. Right. So let the image editor of choice be Photoshop. Uh, and then you'll be in good shape. And hopefully by the time we finish this webinar here, you'll get a small understanding of exactly what it's going to take and all the cool stuff that you can do with it. Uh, and to let you know that in this book that I created, the one I showed you a minute ago, there's way more more information in that book uh, than you'll see here. There's also the art files that I'm going to use in here is all included with a free link. Uh, if you purchase the book, you know, that sort of thing. So we have to understand vector artwork and we have to understand raster art. Now, for those of you that have never heard of the word raster before, I'm pretty sure every single one of you listening to this, listening to me talk right now, uh, y'all know exactly what a raster file is. You just may have not made the connection. But if you have a cell phone in your pocket or your purse and have you ever taken a picture, you've just created a raster file. 
is a pixel-based, continuous tone, pixel-based image, right? That's what you see here. This one looks painted up versus vector file in Illustrator look like, right? It's just a full color painted illustration. And you look over here at my layers and you'll see it's just one layer with transparency. That's these little checkers in the background. And I'll show you all that stuff here in a minute. But just know you need to understand vector files and you need to understand raster files. Uh, and once you've got a grasp of those two things, and it's super easy, by the way, and I'm about to show you right now, uh, once you understand what it takes to control a raster file, there's nothing you can't print. That's the cool part. So knowing that, we're going to go ahead and uh, open up a different image here. And I want to want you to see this. So we're going to open this Gone Fishing here. So this is a Gone Fishing full color .png, right? I'm going to open it in Photoshop. And that's what we have. So this is, again, a full color painting, right? It's cool artwork, a lot of continuous tone, a lot of, a lot of uh, blending and whatnot going on in that little water texture there inside those letters. So this is a raster file. So now let me open up another file. Let's go ahead and open Illustrator one more time. And I want to open up that file, this file, in Illustrator and show you the difference. So let's go to file open. Here's my illustrator file. Okay. So looking at this, this looks like a, a vector file, right? So if I go ahead and preview in my outline, you can see this one is a vector file. So if I click on it, there's my nodes. So that's a dead giveaway that this, this file is a vector file we can use, manipulate, change, scale, that sort of thing. But just because a file might look like a vector file doesn't necessarily mean that it is. So watch, let's go back over to Photoshop here. And I'm going to open up another file like this one. Now this looks like a vector file, right? Absolutely. So if I mouse around here and I click and drag. It doesn't have anything. I look over here, it's a locked layer. So the name of this one is gonefishing.png. So let's go right back to Illustrator, and I'm going to get rid of this file, right? And I'm going to open a new one. And I don't care what size, I'm just going to click on that. So if I go to File, Place, gonefishing.png, there's my vector file, right? I, I hit the Place button, click on it, and take a look. So it looks like a vector file now. Well, if I go to my Preview and go to Outline, I get this square. So just because it looks like a vector file doesn't mean that it is. So you have to make sure that you're dealing with the right, the proper file, right? So um, just wanted to point that out because a lot of times if people see these things and they think, oh, this is definitely a vector file, so I can work with it. And you can. Let, don't get me wrong. So here's a for instance. This image will absolutely print on a DTG printer, right? The problem is there are some issues that may come into play. So one being, um, one, it's flat artwork, right? It's two colors, three colors if you count this white here as a color. Um, and it's going to look flat. And it's going to look flatter than what we see here on screen because what we see on screen is the full color RGB values. Right? That's everything. That's the best our artwork will look because it's RGB pixels turned on on this screen going straight into our eyeballs. Once we start reproducing it and we print it on a DTG printer, now we have reflective light and it degrades because we're printing on a, uh, a weaved garment, those kinds of things. So it just steps down from here. Uh, another thing is if we print this flat color like it is, and if we lose a couple of nozzles, especially right now being winter time, if you're really, uh, dry and got a lot got the heaters rolling um and there's le there's very a little humidity around what's going to happen or what could happen is you can lose some nozzles and you'll see some banding in this artwork and that's gonna make you have to it'll you'll ruin that print you won't be able to sell or utilize that print right so today what i'm going to show you a little later on here in, in this webinar is how to camouflage those things how to work with files and dress them up to do two things. One, make the print look nicer and look more interesting. 
And then two, it will help camouflage any issues that you might have. So if you look over here at this guy, if we lose a nozzle or two and we see a and there's a little banding taking place, chances are you're not even going to notice it because there's so many colors in here. There's so much detail going on in this fish. All the blends going on in here from highlight to shadow to shadow to highlight and that sort of thing. You won't even see that it lost a couple of nozzles, right? Um, so that means you have a, you, you can save that print and actually utilize it and print with it and actually sell that print, right? That kind of thing. So those are huge advantages of using Photoshop as continuous tone files, right? Raster files on a DTG printer. Because let's face it, a DTG printer is designed to print in full color. So why not take advantage of that full color print right from the get beginning? Why try to emulate a screen print flat color artwork on a full color digital machine? Because you can't match it. If I'm going to screen print these, some of these colors, I could have printed this in neon colors. We can't do that in digital DTG printing, right? Those are spot colors. But what we can do is we can print this guy in this full color details, right? That you really can't do for screen printing because of cost, right? You'll need multiple screens and that sort of thing. So, um, utilize the technology for what it's built for and you'll find that you'll have a lot more success. So get rid of these guys here and let's just kind of go straight into what we want to do. We're going to create a new file and this is right now, this is what happens or this is what it takes to control and handle a raster file. So I'm going to come right over here. I'm going to go to inches and I'm going to put 14 here, right? 14 inches by 14 inches because this is going to be a high resolution file when my resolution says 300 pixels per inch. When we create the artwork at Great Dane Graphics, everything we create is created at 14 inches by 14 inches at 300 pixels per inch because that is a high res file. That resolution means I can print anything I want. I can print uh, a magazine cover, a poster. I can use it for my web work, uh, you know, ads and stuff online, anything I need. Um, it has enough resolution in the beginning when I create it to utilize it. So right here, it's just color mode. I want to make sure we always, always, always use RGB. No matter um, if you're going to be thinking that you're printing to a CMYK printer because it's a DTG machine. I got cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and some white in there. Uh, you still want to create the art in RGB because this will give you all the colors to shoot from. And besides, the print drivers and the RIP software do a much better job of reproducing RGB color uh, it kind of reads the RGB math, makes conversions, and you have uh, quality prints on your CMYK printer because it knows how to interpolate and, and rework those numbers. Um, and right here, you want to make sure that you use transparent. Your background contents are transparent. Um, if you click on this thing, I think, I can't remember, but if it's, it might be something like white or something uh, as default, if you've never been in here before, and then you see this little list, it doesn't show in this list. You just got to come in here and scroll up to get to it. So make sure you make it transparent because that's what you need to do in order to print a white shirt, a black shirt, and all the colors in between. It has to have a transparent background. Now, right here where it says advanced options, let's go ahead and twirl that down because I want to I want to show you this. So Photoshop is going to default probably anyways, uh, at least mine always does to working RGB or sRGB. If you if you're printing on a DTG printer now and you're noticing that your blacks are not very black and your colors are really just not rich and saturated, it's probably because this is the working RGB profile you have. Click on this drop down menu and go to Adobe RGB 1998. Now, this is a personal preference. This is definitely my recommendation and my preference. This is how I do everything that I do because I think you, in fact, I've proven it out a million times. So when you print it, you'll have better looking color. Your colors are going to be rich. Your blacks are going to be black uh, by just doing this change alone, right? So go ahead and hit the create button. And when you do that, you'll see these gray and white checkers. Now, this means that it is a transparent background and everything we create on top of this guy is going to be on a transparency and then we're good to go. Now this, these gray and white checkers, that is the universal uh, preview or universal representation of transparent pixels. 
it'll be shown this way in Corel Photo Paint or Corel Painter or you name it. Doesn't matter any of the software out there. All right, so we just set up a file. You saw the resolution. You saw all the steps that we needed to do. So let's go ahead and open up a different file now. And we'll talk about high res files, low res files. So I'm going to open this guy, right? And while, I, while I'm at it, let's just go open up this one here as well. So what you notice is this. This one looks small, right, on my screen. If I click on this one, it's much larger. So if I go to my image size and I come down to the image, image size window, this particular one is 14 by 14 at 300 pixels because this is my stock image. This is what we created at that size, right? So that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to hit cancel on there. So you see it says low res over here. So I'm going to click on it and see it's, it's small. I'm at 100% preview. If you look here at the bottom left corner of my screen. And let's go back to this guy and go to 100%. I can get to 100% really easy by just double clicking on this little magnifying glass. And this is blown up. That is 100% preview. So this is what we're going to get. So the stuff that we see in here is how it's going to actually print on our machine, right? See how smooth all of these colors are inside these blues and reds and, and yellows and things. And if I come over here to the low res, I'm going to go to the image, image size, and you'll see that this is 10 by 10 at 72 pixels. This is what people are going to get when they give it to you off the internet, right? Hey, can you, here's my little two inch by two inch image. And can you put this on the back of a shirt for me? Uh, and your answer should be no, no way. It's not enough resolution, right? So you need to educate your customers. So you're going to tell that customer, Hey, look, uh, I need an actual size at a 300 DPI right worst case 200 something like that and they're going to come into photoshop if they if they have the opportunity or the the photoshop uh, software they just gonna plug in those numbers but i'm going to ahead and cancel this but watch what happens when i double click this magnifying glass see it doesn't get any bigger because there's only 72 pixels per inch in here and this is a low res file so watch what happens when i zoom in on this guy you see the stair steps you see the jpeg st uh, stuff the resolution is not there and this is what it's going to look like. It'll look terrible or it's going to be really small. It, you know, if you print it like that, it's going to be a lot smaller than say you were looking for. So as you blow it up, that's one easy way. Just blow it up and see if you see these little chunks, these uh, stair steps, this anti-aliasing stuff all over the place. Um, that means you have a low res file typically. And just check it. Go to image, image size, and take a look and see what you're dealing with. All right, so resolution is huge. So you know how to create it. You go to File, New, and you plug in those numbers. Um, this is just an illustration to show you the differences between low res and high res files. I mean, they're totally different. Super tight, super detailed in here, right? And that's what you're looking for. All right, so um, one of the reasons that I love Photoshop and I love to show in show you guys and tell you that the only software you need for DTG printing is Photoshop. You don't need the pro, the other stuff, right? Uh, because Photoshop has everything I, I want I need to work with something. So let's do this. We're going to throw some type in here. So I'm going to click on my type tool and you know, here's as black as my color. So in Photoshop, the stuff you see here on the left-hand side, that's my tools and every tool that I click on this options bar across the top is how I can control it. So that's going to let me do whatever, make adjustments to whatever the tool is that I'm working on. So I'm going to go to my type tool. I have my center justification right here. It's set to black. That's fine. Let's go ahead and click on this and I'm going to go ahead and um, type out Great Dane, right? There we go. So what I want to do is stretch this up a little bit. So I'm going to hit I'm going to go to edit menu. I was about to do my shortcut. So I'm going to go to free transform. So see command T or control T on your PC is going to give you these handles. And I want to stretch it up. So I'm going to kind of make it a little bit more bold like this. Double click inside to set it. Um, that looks pretty cool. But this is what I wanted to show because a lot of people don't realize that Photoshop has this. So with my layers over here, if I double click this T icon, right, the actual text, it's going to select it. Right, so my text is selected now. And if you look at the top, my options bar, you see this little T with this little hump here. If I click on that, I get my warp text uh, menu. And what this is, it's all the enveloping tools that you might be familiar with in Illustrator or Corel Draw. So I can arc this guy up, I can arch it, right? I can totally do 
my typical t-shirt style in quotes, right? Um, look, well, it automatically goes to a plus 50 on the bend. Well, if that's too much, I think it is. You can control the amount of bend by just taking it down like this. If I wanted to, I can go the other direction completely and I could put my artwork at the top and set my type across the bottom like that. I mean, so it's one of those things where you, these are judgment calls and you make the artwork like you want, but that looks pretty cool to me. So I'm going to hit okay. So that is, um, you know, Photoshop's, uh, enveloping tool. So I can double click at the T, the type, uh, the T here in my layers again, and I can change that color to one of my corporate colors or whatever you might be, whatever you want. Right. So there's a lot of opportunity. Now I can bring an image in or do whatever, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can, you can get it done with that warp, uh, text tool. It's pretty cool stuff. Now, Here's another thing before I change this one. We're going to keep this one here, but I want to show you some other benefits of Photoshop. Let's talk about layer styles, right? So I'm going to click in here and I'm going to open this image. And I'm going to open the next one. All right. So let's go back to the first one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see. So here's um, some cool artwork. It's got the the blue background in here. Uh, the problem with this blue, is, again, is it's big. If this is a full size of a shirt, full front, it's going to be big and solid and flat. So if I lose a nozzle, I'm going to see banding in it. So the way you avoid that is by adding what's called layer styles to things, right? So that's this texture. It's adding. Um, you can add a texture. Uh, through a layer style, you can add it by adding, you know, imagery. I can put a picture in there. I can put a texture photo in there, whatever I might want. Um, and what that's going to do, even if I do lose my nozzles, like I mentioned before, it's going to sh not show the banding because we have all this stuff going on. So my eye is busy looking at this texture and I won't notice a band or a, or a, no a couple of nozzles dropped out, right? It's not going to be a big deal. Uh, whereas if I did this one and I know I will notice it because it's solid flat color. That to me is the weakest part of digital printing with vector style t-shirt or uh, screen print graphics, right? Those, those are the, that's where it's going to cause an issue. If you lose nozzles, you're going to notice it. So let's go ahead and, uh, I'm going to get rid of these guys here and I'm just going to pretend to open some more za examples for you. I want to show you what layer styles are. Uh, and then I'll show you how we can add some in. So I'm just going to hit my space bar to get this guy to pop up. So there's a pretty cool image. And uh, you can see all the texture going on in this in this type. Now, if I use this word Davis and it was flat color in the middle here, solid red, solid blue, whatever I wanted, and I lost my nozzles, you'd notice it. You're not going to notice it here because of all that stuff going on. So let's take a look at this one here. Same thing. You can create textures and looks and layouts that look like they belong with the artwork that you're working on kind of thing, right? So if you're going to try to match some things, you got total flexibility and creativity to play around and make it work. I got a couple more, I think, maybe. There you go. So these are all created with layer styles in Photoshop. And it makes it makes your artwork way more interesting, uh, in, you know, in my book. And it's going to print way easier and way nicer. And it's just going to uh, be a better, more interesting, full color print. All right, let's take a look here. Now let's get back. Go ahead and cancel. So I've said, don't print this guy totally flat, right? That's not how we want to do things. So what can we do to add some interest to that? So if I go to my window menu and I come down to styles, right? It's going to open up the layer styles. Now this is Photoshop's default layer styles. Um, this came out in Photoshop six, not CS six, but six, probably 15 years ago or more. And when it did, the coolest thing in the world was this. When I push a button, look at that. I am totally changing the look of it. That was great. I mean, I'm like, wow, look at this. Cause I remember it being a lot of work to get some of this, these looks, right? Um, but these are the layer styles that were in here day one. 
uh, that one, okay, maybe you can adjust and do something with, who knows, right? I mean, this one, maybe, I, I doubt it. I mean, you know, some of these things, I don't even know what they're, what you would do with them. And these, again, have been in here, same ones, they're lame as all get out, but they're the same ones forever, right? Um, now, what you can do is you can start off with one of these and you can make adjustments and you can work it and you can see that over here by this little effects icon next to on the same layer towards the right. See, it says effects and it, this one has a bevel and emboss and a gradient overlay. Well, let's go here, right? And see what this one's got. So this one has a bevel and emboss and a gradient overlay. And I can try this one. That one's got a gradient overlay and a pattern overlay. So you can see that Everyone has something different. This is a bunch of strokes all piled into it. Problem is, you not, I don't think you'll find any use for these. Um, so what you can do is do internet searches, right? And you can go and, um, and search for layer styles because there's a lot of layer styles out there that you can get for free. In fact, you can even go to my website, right? And here's, I'll just go to the homepage real quick. And this is how you find it. You go to greatdangraphics.com, you click on free art, and you come down to layer styles and you download it. That's it, right? So let me go ahead and hide this and I'm gonna show you how to bring them in. Because we have, oops, we have some pretty cool ones that I think you might find a use for, right? So I'm just gonna, when you have a layer style applied, if I want to just grab this effects word here and just drag that to the trash, now they're all gone. So I'm starting back from square one. Cool thing is you can't break it. Right. So try it. If you don't like it, just try it again. Do some changes or whatever it might be. So before we load in the other layer styles, let me just show you how we can create something from this on its own. So my layers is selected. I can come over here to this little effects icon here at the bottom of my layers palette. And let's just go ahead and put a stroke on it. Right. Go to there and we get this window. So if you can look and see up here at the top of the screen. Right it has a red stroke well it has a red stroke here so I can adjust the size of that stroke by doing this I can put it to the outside of my my uh, image right and maybe I can click on the color here and I want to make this one white let's say right if I wanted to I can click on this effects icon here at the bottom again and add another stroke so now I have two so I can select that one and move it down one Right, click here and change my color. Maybe this one I want the, to be my red. And hit OK to that. Change the size, change the size, right? And if you look, it says inside. I want to go to the outside. Now you can see that, right? So that's pretty cool look. So let's say we love this. <laughs> I don't think I do, but let's just pretend that we did. And I can go ahead and hit new style right here, right? And I'm just going to do GDG. That's the name of my new style. I'm going to hit OK. And I hit OK to this. Now look here at the bottom of my of my styles palette. It placed that layer style. So I click off of it and select something else, right? And go back to this one. And it applies it too. Now the cool thing is, um, as long as my text is live, I can go ahead and reset my type it's all live it's still good to go so that should give you some example or some idea of what a layer style can do right if i wanted to oops went a little bit too far look at that caps locked there we go all right so that looks great well, maybe now we're going to say you know what i think i want a drop shadow on here right so if you come over as long as you select your layer again right and double click your fx it brings back the window so if you notice over here on the left hand side is what we have in this layer style and you don't see drop shadow. So if you don't see drop shadow there, click on the effects here at the bottom and bring it down to drop shadow. And now there it is. So I can adjust it this way. I can change the angle of it. I can change the distance, the size, all this sort of thing, right? I can come out here and click and actually put it wherever I want. Just you know, maybe I want it there. Maybe I want it darker. So instead of 35, I go up higher. And watch what happens. When I hit the spread, see it looks like it starts to get harder. The size is going to soften it up. So I can soften the edge. I can pull it back. Uh, the distance is how far away it's going to be. You know, that sort of thing. But again, I kind of like to do it this way because I can get it right where I want. Let's say I like that. I hit OK. 
and there it is. So my drop shadow is in place now. And if you look at my layer styles, my effects icons, I got stroke, two strokes and a drop shadow all ready to go. So um, that's how you make your own layer styles. If you wanted to do it a different way and start off with something else, let's do that. So um, I showed you where to go get the layer styles, like from my website. They're free. Go get them, right? But we're going to load them in now. So I'm going to click on this little thing here at the, in my styles palette. I'm going to load my styles in. And I'm going to come in and click on this Great Dane Graphics Layer Style 1, hit open. And now you have another additional. So from right here, all these are the ones that come with the Great Dane stuff, right? So wood, panel, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. So the cool thing is there's stuff that I think you might use, like football textures, basketball textures, right? Things like that. There's wood. We're going to make a bat, whatever. So what I want to show you, though, is still football season for the moment. So I'm going to click on the football texture, right? And what I want to do, though, is take a look. So from right here, it, it looks like a brown textured thing, but the texture is really small. So if I come over here and double-click this effects icon again, now I can come in here and I can change it. So I'm going to look through here, bevel and emboss, I have a stroke, all this sort of things. So I can turn on that bevel and emboss, see what I'm dealing with. If I click on it on the word, I can actually change the size of it maybe a little bit if I wanted to, to see it a little bit better, right? Um, that kind of thing. There you go. Um, the stroke, they have one. I can barely see it. It's set to black at two pixels. Well, if I want to see it more, I can do this. I can make it thicker. I can change the color if you want, right? You know, still do all these kind of things and make it whatever you want. So, uh, I don't know, maybe make it like a gray and yeah, make it a little larger. It's set to the outside. Okay, so uh, maybe that's what we want. Uh, but here, the pattern overlay is what I wanted to show you because right now the scale slider is here. So I can make those nibs, the actual texture itself, a little larger. See that? So now they're starting to look. If I go back this way, it just looks like a textured color. It doesn't look any like anything. So what I can do is I can control the texture size to where it actually fits in my image and it looks pretty cool so maybe that's I can now tell tell that that looks like a football texture right off the bat click on the same thing basketball stuff and that sort of thing this little one right here in gray if I click on that it's gonna show me the nibs but it's gonna be in whatever color my text is done in so if my team color is something else right let's say it's a green and I hit OK it's gonna give me my textures in the green. So you can customize this for whatever your customer, your team, your school is that you're working with, right? So uh, super cool layer styles is one of my favorite parts uh, of Photoshop, actually. All right, so let's keep moving because I got a lot we can do here. Whoops, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of this. I will um, get rid of this guy. And we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, distressed textures, right? Because let's face it, distressed images have been popular in screen printing forever, like years and years and years. So, and it, you know, here it is. It's just like a, it, it breaks up an otherwise, um, you know, solid, clean image. Uh, so it does two things. One, it, it will distress it or age it or look like a typical worn uh, t shirt. Um, and it gets, it makes it, a little bit more interesting and it gives our eyes something to do right when it looks at this stuff in here there's things going on so my if I lose nozzles again I won't recognize banding and I can still sell the shirt to me that's key because there's a lot of times you're gonna print something when there's solid flat pretty color but it's solid and flat you will notice the this the banding um, big time and then you got to throw it out because you can't use it so I'm going to show you how to how to create one, right? So um, I'm going to open up that image here. Image, image size. Let's just check it. 300 by 14. See, yep. High res. That's what we needed. This is my image. It's This is my stock design. That's how we have. That's how it comes. If I wanted to put a color behind it, let's say we're just going to go with like a, I don't know, maybe a dark gray. Uh, I'm going to fill it. Background layer. There you go. Uh, we can do... You know, blue, whatever color you want to put it on, makes no difference. But just to see the image, so I can turn off the top layer since they're transparent pixels back here. See those gray and white checkers? Transparency. So what I want to do, though, is we want to throw a texture over here. So I can do this. I can come in and open, go to File Open, and here's a burnout texture. If you buy the book, this texture is included in the um, 
in the book at the download link. So here it is. We have a transparent uh, pixel. So this is how I'll do. I'll grab this tab and bring it down and just let it go, right? And I'm going to come over here and grab the texture and drop it on my image. All right. So you notice we can see it back there, but the artwork is above it, right? So the cool thing about layers, I can grab this texture layer here, click on it, and move it to the top of my layer stack. And now I have the textures all over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edit Menu. Again, I'm going to move my uh, free transform here because I want to get this guy totally covered, right? So I'm going to kind of move it to the left, sort of line up that, and come down here and do it like this. So I'm going to get him to fit the screen a little better. So um, so that, and I can, if I double-click in here, hit the return key, either one will set it. So I can turn it on and off and take a look. And you're going to get distracted by the stuff going around it because it is... Um, on its own layer and it's still in black right so what you could do is I could do it this way I could uh, my foreground color is still selected right so if I wanted to put for right now just to check it let's say I'm gonna print on this gray shirt what I can do is if, if I mouse over this and I hold I mouse over this little image in my layer and I hold the command key or the control key on your PC and I see what happens when I hit that key look at my cursor changes right so I'm gonna click once and it's marching ants everywhere right they're all over the place but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit command H or I'm gonna go up to view and I'm gonna hide my extras see that's my command H or your control H on your PC so I'm gonna click on that so it's still selected it's just hidden right so it's hiding it's just not visible so now if I um, go to let's say edit fill right and we can come in here and go to foreground color because I have I wanted to go with the gray and I hit OK now it filled it kinda with that color so you can still see some of the black pixels going around it this is just to give you a kind of an idea so if I go ahead and do it again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go I'm gonna hit uh, option delete or alt backspace to fill it again and it kinda starts to get rid of those extra little pixels as you can see in the background there so all I'm doing is, is I'm adding more gray into this so now you can see on my gray shirt that's kinda what it's gonna look like that, I think that looks pretty cool so it's, it's rough it's broken up it's still neat um, but it's if I print it this is what I'm gonna be printing this gray color that's not what you want so we just gotta knock out this texture from the image itself right so we're gonna do it this way first thing I'm gonna tell you to do is always duplicate your artwork right and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it underneath my background and I'm gonna turn my eyeball off and so now when I'm working up with these layers at the top I will always have my original handy so I won't uh, screw it up or I can always start over right do it again so what I'm gonna do now though is I'm gonna go ahead and select it again and there's my marching ants right so I'm gonna turn off the eyeball of my top layer and I have my artwork layer selected now I'm gonna go back to my view and I'm gonna hide my extras again and now all I'm going to do with my foreground color and background color, if I hit the D key on your keyboard, that's going to put my foreground color black and my background as white. But if I just hit the delete key, look what happens. We just now deleted that texture from the artwork itself. So now, without in other words, we, we tested it to see if it was too much text or not enough text or whatever. Uh, but now we can put whatever color shirt we want behind it and see what that looks like let's go ahead and grab this orangey color right and we're gonna go ahead and whoops ha <laughs> okay so my my selection was still done because it was just hidden so I'm gonna command or control Z that and I'm gonna go ahead and go to select deselect hit and command or control D to deselect it so now I can change this color here by doing that right so is if I'm printing this blue image on an orange shirt this is what it's going to look like because I knocked out my texture. So whatever color we change it to, that's what the, that's what you're going to see back here. Um, that's just kind of how it works. So right now we got a cool distressed texture inside this guy, um, ready to roll. Right, it's good to go. All right, so we're getting down to the wire here. We're going to be uh, running out of time. A couple more things I want to cover. So I'm going to get out of this uh, here for a minute. And um, one of the big things about Photoshop and one of the big questions I hear is hey uh, if it's not a vector file I can't change colors with it and you absolutely positively can what I want to show you is this this is my stock design right this is one of our stock images 
and this is how it's painted. So it has all our oranges and cool, you know, stuff like that. But we have magenta as the spots. Pretty neat. This is what we're going to shoot for here, though. Right? So we're using this image for Lakeview Jaguars, which their team color is blue. So I'm going to show you how to change this in like a second or two. Uh, to match your team so you can absolutely change colors in Photoshop and I cover in the book all the ways that you're going to ever need to do it right there's three uh, levels of complexity basically and I'm going to show you one or uh, one of them now with a couple of variations so I'm going to do this I'm going to open up the original right and you'll see all my magenta stuff here and I'm going to zoom up and just kind of uh, make it full screen so you saw we wanted to change his eyes and all these magenta spots to blue. So let's do it this way. I'm going to go to Image Menu, Adjustments, and I'm going to come down to Hue Saturation, right? So there I'm going to get this window. So what I want to do is change the color. So obviously I want to change the hue. So if I go to my hue slider and I start pushing this guy around like this, look what happens. We're changing colors, and maybe that's what we want, right? But the problem is... Everything's changing. I just want to change his eyes and his spots to blue, not everything. So, you know, you just kind of roll back and forth and figure out what's going on. Sometimes you get lucky, that might work, but most times it won't. But what we can do is we can tell Photoshop, look, just focus on the magenta color in here. And we do that this way. So I go to my master. See, it was set to master. And when you move that hue slider, everything changes. So I go to this master. I want to say, hey, just move the magentas for now. That's all I want to change. So now, if I go to the same hue slider, but we told Photoshop to focus on magenta, look what happens. We can start changing the color of just those spots, right? So obviously if my team's green, I can do it that way. If it's not, I just keep moving until I find the color that I'm looking for. That matches the color that we were shooting for. That's my team colors. So I just adjusted it, just the magentas. We didn't touch the yellows and the oranges, the reds, any of that stuff. Photoshop knows now that that's what I wanted to make the adjustment to. There we go, and we can use it, and we're ready to roll. So you can totally change any color you want in Photoshop by doing it that way. Uh, there's one other thing about this hue saturation. So if I go to Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation too. Uh, a lot of times, monochromatic things or color, tone on tone things are really, really popular, right? So everything at Great Dan Graphics that we do is full color full-blown cool illustrations like this but you don't always have to use it that way so you pull up the hue saturation slider and see this little colorized button if I click on that look what happens now that looks like brown maybe not so cool not so you know great looking but this is what we can do we can saturate it up because that's part of the problem right we it automatically lowers the saturation on things and then maybe that's a better color for us. Or we can change it to a color that we need or we're looking for for our team color or school color, whatever it might be. You got all the colors in the rainbow. So all you got to do is hit that colorize button and go there. So something like this. If I want it a little bit brighter, I can hit the little lightness slider. But just know this. When you do that, you're going to also brighten up all the black areas. But when I do it with this colorize button, it makes my black areas more like a darker purple. So I can brighten it up a little bit and still have that cool factor, right? So let's say that that uh, is what we're looking for. Then I can hit OK. So now we just took a full color graphic, turned it into a tone on tone. If I do this, if I hit a new, new layer, right? And I put some kind of darker background color to it. Um, Probably if I was going to find a t-shirt color, it would be darker than that. So here's a good way to do it. So if I click on that and come in here, get a really good rich purple and uh, put it in there. So you get the idea. Tone on tone stuff. Throw some type on it. You got a pretty cool customized image. And it all stems from, if I go to the file menu, revert, all stems from that. Right? So just because you see it in full color, now you know how to get a monochromatic tone on tone style look which is super popular you can take that tone on tone look and apply a texture you know a distress texture to it and make um, the more things you know how to do the more capabilities and more uh, successful you're going to be in your business right wanted to show you that super super cool so um, now one other thing I, w I definitely want to talk about uh, because we're getting close here on time is this we're going to um, 
is color charts, right? So I'm going to go to file menu. I'm going to open and I'm going to come here and I'm going to go to my color tests, right? So when you're trying to print something in your shop, in your office, whatever it might be on your printer, this is RGB values. So if your customer says, Hey, I need to get a red and it needs to be a deep red. It's kind of my corporate color. Um, what can you do? Right? So that's one. And I'm going to show you this one. Uh, this is one of our stock swatches, right? Default, full color, all the colors kind of in a rainbow. You can print this on your machine. If you buy the book, it's included in the graphics and the art files in the back. Um, and if you don't want to buy the book yet, you still aren't convinced that the book is worth it, go to my website, hit the free art button, and download the color charts. You can try it anyway, right? We know uh, you, this is the importance of this piece of it, right? So you print this, and your customer says, hey, I need a green. I have Billy Bob's grass cutting service, and you know what? This is perfect. This is the green I want right here. So if you print this on a white T-shirt, and he sees it, Right. And he can pick from there. Don't let him pick from the screen because you can't match these exact. You just can't do it on a digital printer. It's like the Pantone book. You can't match everything in a Pantone book. Uh, so you shouldn't really use it as a main go to. But you can try to pick a Pantone color that, or the customer gives you a Pantone color. You can try to match it and make your own versions of it. So let's say this green is the one you wanted. He's, you've, you've already got it printed out on a white t-shirt and he picked it from in your shop. You know that with zero is your RG, these are RGB, red, green, uh, blue, zero, 103, and 22, right? Uh, that's what you would do. I'm going to open it up here and I'm going to show you. So this, this is the color here, right? So if I come in and grab my, actually just can go to get my color wheel here and click on it. Right. And this is where you would plug those numbers in. So zero and the RGB value is zero, 103 or 22. For instance, if he says, if you got another customer that says, you know what, this is the, uh, I want this bright blue right here. So I get zero, zero, 214. So you can just come in here, zero, zero, and then type in 214. And there it is. So now we just have our foreground color. So now we, if you need it to, you can set some type, whatever it might be, corporate logo, whatever, and you can assign it that color. But if you have this printed at your shop on a white t-shirt, they can actually pick from a printed image, which means you know since you printed it once, you can print it again, and you're going to be really close to the same color. They're not looking at a color chart or a computer screen or something like that. You know it's real world in your shop. Uh, and that's how you got there in the first place. So hopefully this was a small amount of information. I can do this for days. There is days worth of work in that book. Uh, so, um, the book is going to be, it's on sale. We got 35% off plus free shipping. If you go to the website, you'll see it there, um, at, at RA set up at that price point. We hope you, um, feel like you learned enough from this webinar here to, Take advantage of that discount, save some money, and learn how to do the best prints possible. There's so much more in that book than we can cover here. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, and just so you know, um, what I'm doing now and what I'm so excited about, we created two books, artwork for vinyl cutting already, uh, one for Adobe Illustrator, one for Corel Draw. The artwork for DTG printing book is done in Photoshop because that is where I think you should be for this technology. Uh, right now, we're in the middle of another book. It's called Artwork for White Toner Laser Printers. So if you have an Oki or Uninet printer, um, we're showing you how to get the artwork off of that, how to make the adjustments, how to control this artwork, these artwork files. We have one for screen printing that we're going to focus on, and then another for die sub. I wrote two books in the past, uh, T-Shirt Artwork Simplified, one for Adobe, one for Corel, same lessons in each, and we're doing the same type of thing. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to focus all the lessons that I can put, the stuff you're going to run into every day. I can really get a lot of information in there if we split off the decoration methods, right? So vinyl cutting, DTG, white toner, laser printers, screen printing, and dye sublimation all are going to be done that way. So we're well into the next book. Um, we got the ones we have now. So stick with us. Check our website. And when you see uh, the new stuff in, you know, sign up for that the info there and we can send you let you know when we got new new products and stuff so thank you very much appreciate you spending the time